How to Build Light Maps in Unity 2020.1. In this video, we'll be looking at getting started using the light mapping tools available in Unity 2020. You can build light maps to add global illumination, bounce lighting, soft shadows, and ambient occlusion to your scene. Global Illumination Unity has both real-time and baked global illumination. Global illumination, or GI, is a concept which describes how light is bounced off of surfaces onto other surfaces rather than being limited to just the light arriving directly from a light source. Global illumination provides direct lighting as well as soft indirect light and both direct and indirect shadows from bounce lighting. Both the universal render pipeline and the high definition render pipeline are compatible with baked global illumination from the progressive light mapper. In this video, we'll be looking at how to bake light maps for our scene using baked global illumination, which will both enhance the realism of our lighting and improve performance. Baked lights in static geometry. In this example scene, we have a level lit entirely by dynamic lights. Since most objects in our level do not move, such as the floor, the walls, and some props, we can bake the lighting to speed up rendering. We can also bake out high quality bounce lighting and soft shadows, which dynamic lights cannot do without leveraging other technologies such as Unity's real-time GI system. First, we need to identify which objects we would like to bake light maps for. Usually, this is any medium to large, non-moving geometry. Extremely large or very small objects, such as terrains and tiny debris, are not great light map targets. In this scene, good candidates for light maps are the floor, the walls, and some large props. Once you've identified which objects to bake lighting for, you will need to mark them to be included in the light mapper. Enable the Contribute Global Illumination option in the Mesh Renderer under Lighting. This will enable the light mapping options for this mesh renderer. Alternatively, you can mark the object to Contribute GI in the dropdown in the upper right corner of the inspector. Any objects with Contribute GI enabled will be included in the light mapper. Next, we need some baked lights. Lights can either be fully dynamic, fully baked, or operate in a mixed mode. Open Window, Rendering, Light Explorer to see all the lights in your scene and their settings. In this example, let's set our lights to mode Baked. Any lights set to Baked mode will contribute lighting into the light mapper. Real-time lights will not contribute any baked lighting. We're ready to start the baking process. Open the lighting window under Window, Rendering, Lighting. The lighting window contains the settings for the different baking systems included with Unity. Let's enable Baked Global Illumination and select a light mapper. In this video, we'll be looking at the Progressive Light Mapper. It is recommended to use the Progressive Light Mapper for Baked GI as it provides relatively fast results. The Progressive Light Mapper comes with two backends to choose from. The CPU backend uses your computer's CPU and system RAM, and the GPU backend uses your computer's GPU and VRAM. The GPU backend can dramatically speed up bake times. The output of the Light Mapper's GPU backend strives for feature parity with the CPU backend. In most cases, both backends can be used interchangeably. Note that the Progressive GPU Light Mapper is a preview feature in active development and is subject to change. Baking the scene. To see the light map resolution in your scene view, change the scene view mode to baked light map using the menu in the upper left corner of the scene view. The baked light map mode shows you the baked texel resolution if you have show light map resolution enabled. Let's change the light map resolution in the lighting window to a lower value. It's recommended to start baking at a lower resolution to allow you to tweak lighting values and iterate more quickly. However, this may introduce artifacts. If you have auto-generate enabled, the baking process will automatically run when Unity detects a change that affects light mapping. To bake and save a light map to disk, disable auto-generate and click Generate Lighting to start the baking process. A progress bar will appear in the bottom right corner of the editor window. If you are using the progressive light mapper, with progressive updates enabled, the light mapper will bake the textiles currently visible in the scene view. Once finished baking, the light map will be displayed and saved to disk. If you make any changes to the light mapped objects, baked lights, or light map settings in your scene, you will need to rebake the light maps. Just click the Generate Lighting button again once you're ready to bake again. You can also enable Auto Generate to have Unity automatically bake whenever you make changes to any objects that contribute to the light map. Note that when Auto Generate is enabled, light maps will not be saved to the project folder. Using Prioritize View and Auto Generate, the Progressive Light Mapper can allow you to more quickly iterate on baked lighting in your scene. Ambient Occlusion 
Unity's Light Mapper comes with a baked ambient occlusion feature. Ambient occlusion, or AO, approximates how much ambient lighting can hit a point on a surface. Ambient lighting is lighting that is not coming from a specific direction. AO darkens creases, holes, and surfaces that are close to each other. These areas occlude or block out ambient light so they appear darker. Enable ambient occlusion in the lighting window. To increase the size of the regions that receive this darkening effect, increase the max distance. To adjust the AO's intensity, change the indirect contribution which affects the darkness of shaded areas. The direct contribution adjusts the intensity in areas that are in direct light. Ambient occlusion can be a useful tool to allow you to accentuate crevices and corners in your scene. Although it's not physically correct, adding AO is an artistic choice to help you achieve the look you want. Light Map UVs If you are having problems with artifacts or seams in your baked light maps for certain models in your scene, take a look at its Light Map UVs. By using the UV Overlap Scene View mode, you can see where the overlapping texels are in your Light Map UVs. These may come from things like light map gutters that are too small, which can lead to light map bleeding. This can help you visualize how your mesh's pack margin settings are affecting your light maps. All meshes need light map UVs for light maps to bake and display properly. In Unity, light map UVs are assumed to be the second UV channel in a mesh. You can author these in your modeling program or have Unity generate them for you. To have Unity generate light map UVs for a mesh, select the asset in your project view, then in the Mesh's Import Inspector, enable Generate Light Map UVs and click Apply. You may want to tweak Unity's UV generation algorithm using the settings. For more information on the Generate Light Map UV settings, please visit the documentation linked in the description. Unity 2020.1 features a new calculated margin method for generated light map UVs under Light Map UV settings. The new calculated margin method will guarantee no light map bleeding as long as two conditions are met. The mesh instance with the smallest transform scale should be at least the same size or larger than the min object scale. Secondly, the scene with the smallest light map resolution should be at least as large as the min light map resolution. The new calculated margin method may require a bit more texture space to fix UV overlaps, but can help you reduce light map bleeding. Final Bake. Once you've iterated more quickly on your lighting in a lower resolution, you can bake your light maps at a higher resolution to increase quality and minimize artifacts. The calculated margin method's minimum light map resolution should be set up based on your final intended light map resolution. If you've lowered your light map resolution to iterate quickly, you may be seeing overlaps. These overlaps will go away once you do your final bake at the full resolution you intended. Let's increase our light map resolution and do a final bake on our light maps. Adjust the light map resolution to increase the texel density of your light map and the light map size to change the size of the light map textures. A higher light map size can hold larger objects but will use more memory. You may need to use a lower light map resolution to reduce memory usage for your project and target platform. Some hardware may also have a constraint on maximum texture size. Using the compressed light maps feature will improve the file size of the light map on disk but may introduce compression artifacts. Evaluating the suitability of using compression is an optimization concern given the memory constraints for your target platform. Our high resolution light map is done baking. We hope this video helps you get started building light maps for your scene and helps you create fast, beautiful lighting in your scene. We can't wait to see your light map scenes. Thanks for watching.